Yeah, my Broner was selling tickets, man. We're going to talk about that, too. We're going to talk about that, too. But Broner was not cooning. He, he was being a showman. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, man, the the dude who um, what's his name, Madonna? Now he has heart. Now I give him that. Madonna has heart, but this dude was just throwing a bunch of windmill punches. The dude, none of his punches were landing. I mean, he was throwing a lot of punches, but you got to throw some shit that's gonna count. You dig? Now the Madonna dude, he came out strong in the first couple of rounds. I mean, he came out getting it in, but then. Floyd let him punch himself out, which I knew he was going to let him do. The dude was punching himself out, and he kept throwing them overhand, that overhand right. That's all predictable. So, dude, the dude didn't have no real good strategy. He missed most of the punches, and he was head button. He tried to, y'all see when he tried to throw that knee up there? I'm recording. Y'all see when he tried to throw that knee? So, yeah, Madonna... He has heart, but he, you know, he got tired and started fighting like a hood rat off World Star. He just started throwing, he was throwing wild punches. But he got a strong chin, I'll say that, because Floyd was getting him with them rights. And Madonna was eating them fucking right hooks. He was eating them hooks just like he was eating that little, that little snack cake after the fight. What the hell was that he was eating? I think he tried to get him a little endorsement deal after the fight. Madonna came out eating like an Argentinian cupcake or some shit. I'm like, what the hell is he doing? They're like, put that shit down. No, but he had heart. He went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. A lot of people were sleeping on him. But Madonna, he did go. He went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but just strategically. You know, Floyd outboxed him strategically. Floyd didn't waste a lot of punches on the dude. They tried to put Adrian Broner's... Con well, look, for those who don't know, after the fight, Adrian Broner... Who was, a, who was that guy Adrian Broner was fighting? He was fighting the Mexican dude. And understand this, Adrian Broner was getting booed all night by the Mexican crowd. And that's the thing, man. A lot of, even Floyd gets booed, and he's an American fighter. People go there, the majority of the crowd seems to be against all the black fighters, no matter if they're the heavyweights or whatever. And Broner just got real gangster with it. Carlos Molina, exactly. So, you know, they were booing Adrian Broner all night. They were booing him all night. So he figured, like, fuck it, if you're going to boo, let me give you something to boo about. So what he said wasn't racist because he said, like, he was doing in the interview. He was like, look, you know, I'm the, I'm the can man. Anybody can get it. An African, I just beat the fuck out of a Mexican. And everybody's like, ooh. And the guy, the guy interviewing him was like, hey, come on, show some class. But he was selling them tickets. Now, it may have been an asshole comment, but again, he said African and he said Mexican. So it wasn't really racist, but it was you could look at it as an asshole comment. Yeah, he said African. So y'all can't, it ain't, the, it ain't no racial comment. He didn't say anything negative about no, no, no Mexican person. Yeah, he didn't say anything negative. Just like, you know, you can't compare that to Donald Sterling. Donald Sterling was specifically saying something negative. <laughs> A lot of things negative about black folks, not even the same. People always trying to compare some kind of black racism to white supremacy. No. What's up, Rod Willie? Rod Willie in the house. So it was an asshole comment, but it wasn't racist, though. It was an asshole comment. But he was purposely being an asshole. Like, look, okay. And, and, and that's the thing with black fighters. See, black fighters, and let, let me break this whole thing down, because on Twitter, 
And that's another thing. On Twitter, oh, it was nigga fest on Twitter. That nigga Adrian Broner. That nigga Floyd Mayweather. So no matter what you do, they're going to be having a nigga fest anyway. I mean, Floyd Mayweather was very hospitable, very humble, and he was still all that cocky nigga. Oh, I hate that cocky nigga. So Adrian Broner is playing up to that. He's like, fuck it, if you're going to diss me, I might as well go on all out with it. But you, you notice a lot of racial hatred with, with sports athletes, with black sports athletes. And not just in, in, in boxing, but in baseball. Do y'all know that Hank Aaron, to this day, still gets hate mail and death threats? Hank Aaron broke Babe Ruth's home run record in the 1970s. Hank Aaron, to this day, still gets hate mail. You know, people, black people always told to let shit go and all this old stuff. They don't let nothing go. They don't let anything go. Hank Aaron, this man is, what, 80-something years old, probably, and still gets hate mail. There's a black hockey pit player, P.K. What's P.K.'s last name? He's a black hockey player. P.K. be beating the shit out of them dudes, too. He be scrapping with them. What is P.K.'s last name? I can't think of P.K.'s last name, but he's, like, one of the few black hockey players and whenever he wins a game or whatever, it's nigger fest. The, they calling him all types of niggas. Yeah, Subban. Yeah, P.K. Subban. P.K. Subban, that's his name. This brother, he was winning games, and they calling him all types of niggas. So, you know, we, we haven't gone anywhere racially in this country. We, we really haven't gone anywhere. We're, we're in the same place that we've always been. And with boxing, that's a very delicate sport. It, it, it hits a delicate spot because in the boxing ring, and I talked about this before, it's mano a mano. It's just you and that other person. You don't have the system of white supremacy to help you. So when you get in there with a black boxer, he talks a gang of shit. The, box, the black boxers talk trash. That's the only place where they can talk trash and then back up their trash talking without the immediate ramifications of the dominant society. Now, they do get ramifications outside of the ring as payback. You notice a lot of black fighters are always getting punished by some type of law. They're always getting thrown in jail for some old humbug charge as a way of paying them back. And the black fighters, you know, they take pride in that. Again, that's the only place where they can beat your ass and the system of white supremacy cannot help you in that ring. And Larry Holmes said that. And I talked about that before in the Cooney fight. He was like, look, when I get in the ring with Cooney, you can't call the police. And I knew exactly what he meant by that. He's like, when I start beating your ass, we ain't outside here in the rest of society where you have the police and you have the system of white supremacy to help you. When it's me and you in that ring, your ass is mine. <laughs> that ass is all mine. No system is going to help you. And that's the hate thing there. Because many of those in the dominant society, you know that you depend on the system of racism to assist you when it's one-on-one -on -one, mano a mano a lot of times you lose and this says a lot about race relations in our country in order to thrive and to compete on an equal level with a black person there has to be a system of equality of inequality there has to be a system of inequality helping a lot of people and that's something that we need to discuss in this country that's something that we need to discuss <clears throat> What's up, Super Dreads? Say so they, they just fired Mark Jackson. Why they fire Mark Jackson? <clears throat> and we gotta talk about 
Well, you think if Floyd didn't flash as much, it ain't about flashing. So what? If you got money, you're supposed to spend your money. It ain't about flashing, dude. That's a cop out. It, there's always been this thing of black men, if you got money, or and if you're confident, you're always looked down upon. You always, no matter what you do, you got to literally live like a hermit. If you're a black dude and you got money and you got some confidence about yourself, that's that whole, that goes back to the whole Jack Johnson thing. With Jack Johnson, they made it seem like he was extra flashy. He was just doing shit like a, a normal rich person would do. Buy nice cars, wear nice clothes. They would make Jack Johnson, when he would beat an opponent, because most of his opponents were white, they told him, if you knock somebody out, don't smile. You dig what I'm saying? It's like, look, we got to humble you. Don't smile if you knock out a white opponent. A little bullshit like that. That'll insecure shit where you need a system of racism to, to help you. You say Floyd playing in the black stereotype. Well, look, he, if Floyd came out humble or whatever, they, he's humble now. Floyd ain't really doing anything out of the ordinary, but they're going to stereotype you anyway. They're going to stereotype you anyway. They, now, the coon, Joe Lewis was kind of a coon. Joe Lewis, in truth be told, Jackie Robinson was on the coon train a little bit. A lot of folks don't want to talk about this. Jackie Robinson was on the coon train. This is why they'll do a movie about him and all that stuff. You know, they do movies about Ali because he was just so gangster with it and, and the world respects him so much. But Jackie Robinson, remember, if you look, do some research on Jackie Robinson. During the Civil Rights Movement, Jackie Robinson was one of the people that they put out there to speak down upon people in, in, in the Civil Rights Movement. And he spoke out against Muhammad Ali. When Muhammad Ali didn't want to fight and he was willing to go to jail, Jackie Robinson was against Ali. Jackie Robinson had a first-class ticket on the coon train. Let's be very clear. Yes, he was against Ali in the war. Yeah, Jackie Robinson didn't want to, he did want to be accepted. He took all that. And that's why they did the movie about him. He took all the abuse with dignity. That bullshit. And then Jackie Robinson died broke after all that. Yeah, Jackie Robinson didn't have no money when he died, and neither did Joe Lewis. And that's another thing. Cats do all this cooning and shucking and jiving, and then at the end of the day, you you die with no money. Oh, yeah, I got the fresh cut. Oh, yeah, I got the fresh cut. I had my Philly barber get it in today. But no, Floyd is the truth, man. I love Floyd Mayweather. He's the truth. Floyd Mayweather is the truth. And he's not on that coon train. So I don't, he's not playing in no black stereotypes. Floyd is real gangster with his. Floyd don't let them put him in that coon box. Because Floyd knows the game. He knows they'll use him up and throw him to the curb and have him broke and with no money. And they'll, they'll do him like they did Mike Tyson. So Floyd is about his business. Much respect to Floyd. And Adrian Braun is funny as hell. El Quico, what is El Quico talking about? 